Today on the Tiger Lacrosse Report, head coach Sean Nadlin and I will preview the Tigers' win over the Furman Paladins. Get ready, Tiger fans. The Tiger Lacrosse Report starts now. AT&T knows the best kind of holiday is the kind where everyone gets what they wished for. Make this holiday extra happy when you buy one, get one free on our most popular smartphones, like the Samsung Galaxy S6. Buy one, get one free. So spread some cheer and capture every minute of it. Right now at AT&T, buy one, get one free on our most popular smartphones. How long does it take to change the game of basketball? Days, years, decades. How about 0.4 seconds? All of a sudden, big ain't so big no more. Small ain't so small. The step back three is the new dunk. Follow through is the new poster. Range is the new hang time. How long to change the game of basketball? One second or less. White Market's ice cream plant is based in Sunbury, Pennsylvania, and locally owned and operated. We've been making our ice cream for nearly 50 years. We create roughly 70 flavors of ice cream right now. We use local ingredients, especially our cream, which is from our milk plant. The cream is what gives our, our ice cream a rich and creamy texture. Now together with our customers, uh, we've created a a product called peanut butter indulgence, which will be coming out this summer. It's a peanut butter ice cream with sea salt caramel swirl and chocolate covered pretzel. How could you go wrong with that? Personally, I love our ice cream. You come to our house at any given time, you'll find at least five packages of ice cream in our freezer. Uh, our kids grew up eating wise quality ice cream, and now we get to treat our grandchildren to it. It's been a pleasure for me to be tasting ice cream for over 40 years for Wise Markets, and, and I'm loving every minute of it. Hello, and welcome inside the Towson Sports Network studios for today's edition of the Tiger Lacrosse Report. I'm your host, Spiro Marikas. The Tigers faced off against the Furman Paladins and picked up a 15-6 victory this past Saturday. Let's take a look at the highlights from the win.
Towson got two goals each from Brian Bolwicki, Spencer Parks, and Ben McCarty, along with Ryan Drenner and Tyler Young. Spencer Parks was named co-CAA Player of the Week and USILA Offensive Player of the Week, and the Tigers are now ranked 11th in the nation. As always, I'm joined by head coach Sean Natlin. Coach, you were coming off that win against Ohio State, and we had looked at Furman. They didn't have any wins yet. They were 0-6 on the season. Were you a little concerned about how your team might come out on Saturday afternoon? I think that's always a concern after a win, you know, especially a, an overtime win where you put a lot of effort and uh, the way that we had to win that game with having a seven-goal lead and then uh, giving it up and, and them tying it up, Ohio State tying it up, and then having to win in overtime with the travel and everything. You know, you wanted to make sure that your guys were focused and, you know, as far as healthy and uh, physically ready for Furman, um, but mentally we wanted to make sure our guys were focused and dialed in, so that's always a concern. Well, I guess they were dialed in because by the end of the first quarter it was 7 to nothing. so I guess all your worries kind of went away at that point about whether the team would come out ready. Yeah, they, they came out ready, they were excited to play, but more so I think we shot the ball really well in that first quarter specifically as far as getting the shots on cage, getting the shots in good spots, being able to capitalize on our opportunities early in the game. It definitely allowed us to, to kind of settle in and kind of get the, the mojo going. The other thing you got is Alec Berkeley kind of got back on track on the faceoffs. He was having a rough time for a couple of ball games, but Saturday was a good tonic for him. It was, and uh, I talked to Alec about it after the game. I was proud to see him respond the way he did. Um, he wasn't happy with his performance at Ohio State. Um, you know, he, I think, took maybe four or five faceoffs out there and then, you know, couldn't get any of them really. And seeing him in practice on Thursday after we returned from Ohio State, and you could tell that he was, you know, definitely playing with a bit more of a chip on his shoulder, um, much more uh, intense, focused, dialed into the reps that we were doing in practice, which I was happy to see. And then that, you know, luckily transpired into, you know, some uh, some wins for us on Saturday. You look at Spencer Parks, <clears throat> and, and Spencer had some ball games where he really didn't. He didn't score, didn't have any assists, and then all of a sudden last week he has the big week. What was the change for him? Who knows? You know, people might be paying a little bit more attention to Ryan and, and Joe and some of our midfielders to create more for Spencer. Um, the, the neat thing that's been fun to watch about Spencer this year is that he's not really pressing the issue. Uh, he's not trying to create more than what's there for him. Uh, and fortunately, Spencer's a very dynamic player. He, he's got great vision. He can feed the ball. He can dodge to the cage. He can shoot. Um, you know, he knows how to move in our offense uh, fairly well. So allowing the game to come to him, you know, is, pretty, is a pretty simple thing. And he did that well, capitalized on his opportunities. The guys capitalized when, they got, when he got them the ball, uh, which is always nice to see. So I thought Spencer was, you know, was pretty balanced last week. You come up with a big uh, start against Furman. And then they, they never really got into the ball game, but uh, it seemed like the Tigers maybe got a little complacent later on in the ball game as, as it was obvious you were going to win, and um, you never really just, like, stomped them. Yeah, it was the end of the second quarter was frustrating as a, as a staff, seeing us get selfish on the, um, on the offensive end. The ball was in one stick for a long time. We weren't sharing the ball. Defensively, we weren't communicating as well. So... We talked to the guys about that at halftime, understanding that's you know that's not the level of Towson Cross that we expect. Uh, I thought we did a decent job in the in the second half with that, um, you know, but you know kids are kids and they were kind of I think feeling the game a little bit. We were throwing some different guys in the mix, uh, so the chemistry um, wasn't as consistent as it normally is with uh, set guys playing with each other, which is a good problem to have. You know we were in, in a position to do that. Guys that work hard every day in practice that maybe don't see the field on game day they were able to get out there, which was um, an awesome thing for, that, for us. Yeah, and, and Hunter Lochte talks about that on the broadcast, that those guys work hard every day. And as a starter, you want to put the team in a position to allow those guys to get out on the field. Absolutely. You know, those guys compete against, you know, the scout team competes against our starters every day in practice, five days a week. They're running the other team's stuff and doing their best to do that, to prepare the starters. Um, so to, to give them an opportunity to, to get on the field and actually play Towson across in the uni, you know, as a, as a team, uh, there's nothing more rewarding than that. Let's go back to the Ohio State game, which was a week ago thir uh, Tuesday, a game where you guys built up a 9-2 to lead. Then the next thing you know, you're going to overtime. It's 9-9. How do you explain the two different 
uh, ways that that ball game went. That was possession. You know, their faceoff guy. We were able to neutralize a little bit um, through the kind of the first half, and then in the third quarter, they just continued to, to win faceoff, get possession time, possession time. We turned the ball over. I think we only had maybe five offensive possessions, if I remember correctly, in the second half um, total. So that's a <laughs> that's a tough thing to overcome. But they were winning faceoff after faceoff, and then just wearing down our defense, being able to, to chip in a few goals here and there, um, not really make a run, but, you know, get a goal, you know, we get down the offensive end, you know, we get back and, you know, they get a goal after a little bit. So um, it definitely wasn't the way we wanted it to go, but we were able to find a way. Well, you did find a way. Tigers go 2-0 and last week. That will do it for us today on the Tiger Lacrosse Report. Join us next time where head coach Sean Nottlin and I will talk about the Tigers game against Binghamton University. That episode will be available on TowsonTigers.com or the Towson Tigers on YouTube. For head coach Sean Nadlin, I'm Spiro Marikas. Thanks for joining us, and as always, go Tigers.